Hey, everybody. So, I know that some of y'all are going to think I'm crazy. And I think I'm okay with that. But there is something that has been resonating and rising in me for quite some time now. Probably close to about a month, I guess. Um, and that with all of that has taken place in the last 24 hours and the outcome of the, of the election has really caused me to kind of see where it's been coming from, why it's been coming through. And although I have felt compelled to share it publicly for quite some time, and I've had conversations with, you know, people close to me, I've talked with Ethan about it, I've talked with my good friend Nikki and some other friends about this feeling, um, this message, sort of, uh, and about going public about it and kind of sharing it with the world, um, there has been something that has caused me to not do that. And I, I think I know exactly what that was, and it, it's fear. Fear of people thinking I'm crazy. But after what has happened in the last couple of hours, or last several hours, whatever, couple of days, um, I kind of am at a place where, like, I'm not sure I thought it could get much crazier. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of folks who probably feel that way, too. I think a lot of people were very surprised and or incredibly sh uh, shocked, disappointed, are feeling scared and fearful. And I don't know, I kind of feel like it's about as crazy as crazy can get. So what's the risk in sharing what's coming through for me? Because um, I feel like what's coming through for me is something that people need and I know I need. And I have full belief is something that can help all of us. So, um, you know, if you disagree with this, Totally okay. I get it because three years ago I was someone who probably would have heard this message and been like, okay, take your woo-woo somewhere else, lady. And so that's okay. I get it. All I ask is that you hear it and keep it moving. Um, because if there's anything I've been learning about in the last few years, it is this idea of this law of allowing. And I've talked about this a little bit um, in some of my other videos, specifically about the work I do with gender and sexuality, but it truly is something that, when we can all do it, will lead to a much more peaceful world. So, all I'm asking is that if you disagree with me, disagree with me and keep it moving. I'm not asking for you to accept or affirm or agree with what I'm sharing. I'm offering it for what it's worth. And so, you know, keep in mind that, you know, my allowing you to be who you are in a way prevents me from being who I am. So I'm not asking, you know, I get that it's it's a grieving process for, for some folks um, and it's going to take time. I grieved this morning. <laughs> um, and I didn't even realize that I had the emotion that I had until I got up. And fortunately, I have someone in my life who felt it and who is in tune with these messages and the energy uh, and helped me to refocus um, and reminded me of this message that I've been getting. And so the message that I've been getting for quite some time is the power that we have to make things different. And a lot of times when we think about the power we have to make things different, we think we want to change other people's minds. That we have this power to make other people do what we want them to do. But we don't have that power. We only have the power to do what we can do. We only have control over ourselves. And isn't that the way it should be? Isn't that the way we want it? Do any of us want someone else to have control over us? Absolutely not. So why would we want to have control over somebody else? 
And so what I have been contemplating and trying to figure out how to be more vocal and kind of share with people is this idea of being conscious of our thoughts and our words and our actions. And we sometimes have a tendency to get so caught up in what other people are doing and being critical of what other people are doing and the terrible things that are happening because of what other people are doing and saying. And what we don't realize is the power that we have to not invite that into, to not give our attention to those things, to refocus our thoughts and our words and our actions on the positive, to focus on love, not fear. And that can be really, really hard to do, particularly when we're surrounded by fear and people who are focused on fear. But when you feed fear, it grows. It grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And I think that's how we ended up where we are today. I feel like people who support Trump are not necessarily voting, did not vote for him to hurt other people. It's that it was from a place of fear and self-preservation which incidentally impacts other people, right? And so we can be critical all day long about that. We can be critical and say those people don't care about other people, they only care about themselves, or they don't understand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not going to make anything better. It's not going to fix the situation. It's not going to resolve things. Pointing fingers, placing blame, all of those things come from fear. And we have to figure out how to lead with love. And love involves a lot of hard things like being vulnerable and understanding where people are coming from, truly understanding really listening to each other, which I don't think we're very good at doing. <laughs> um, and so, for me, I have been trying very hard since I've been having kind of this feeling and this message of focusing on the positive and not giving energy to the negative. I've been consciously trying to not share negative stories on Facebook, only positive things, only things that lift us up. Now, the thing about that is what lifts me up certainly may not be what lifts someone else up, right? Like you can say, but Jennifer, what good does that do? You know, if you're, if you're sharing the positive, you know, there are going to be people who want to tear that down, but that's the part we shouldn't be doing. If we focus on what makes us happy, what brings us joy, what lights the world, what increases the vibration for us, we continue to draw more of those things to ourselves. And, you know, I've heard this expression about how, you know, when the tide comes in, all ships rise. And so it's this idea of focusing on the positive, focusing on what we want in the world and shining that into the world. And having faith that that is going to lead to more of those same things. I don't know if any of this is making sense. But what I do know is that I feel compelled to try to articulate the messages that I feel like have been coming through. Uh, and 
hopes that that will help someone in whatever way that I can. I realize that, like I said at the beginning, not everything I say is going to resonate with everyone, and that's totally okay. But I also realize that we've all come into this life experience to shine our light and to shine our light for other people to see and to recognize and to shine their light for folks who maybe can't see my light because my light's real weird to them. <laughs> but maybe I shine my light and that helps others to see something that they recognize in themselves and shine their own light. And then that helps others who can't necessarily see my light, see their light. And eventually we're all lighting lights across the world until we're just all brilliant light. Um, and again, I get it. It's going to be folks that are be like, Jennifer has lost her damn mind. <laughs> and it's okay. It's totally okay. And if you are watching and you're like, wow, that really resonates, or yes, I hear that, just know that there's the divine is speaking directly to you and not, not through me. Like, yes, those things come through other people to us, but we all have a direct connection to the divine. We all have direct access to manifesting joy and positive things in the world. We all have that power. And I didn't believe it for the vast majority of my life. I didn't know it. I thought it was crazy. I was very, very skeptical. But in the last several years of my life, I have had experiences that can only be explained by my direct connection with the divine. And I feel like we've come to a place in our world where we all need to connect with that whatever that means. And, you know, I know for a lot of people, for myself, for a long time, any talk of religion or God really turned me off because I was told that I was not worthy of God's love. So I get it if some of this is like, that doesn't resonate with me. I don't believe in a higher power. That's okay. That's okay. You don't have to. I think we just need to all be present to what's within us and to harness, harness the power we have in our energy and to uh, share that positive energy with the world. So about as much sense as I can make right now. Uh, hopefully it wasn't confusing for people, but I guess I just have faith that those people who needed to hear the message heard it and that it came out the way it was supposed to. <laughs> but with that, I send lots of love and lots of light and have lots of hope for where our world is going.